waves and spectra. So in effects animation, uh, often you need to create uh, waves, whether they're uh, waves on the ocean or uh, fluttering of uh, cloth or uh, hair that has um, wave as it's moving. And uh, it's often a challenge in that the um, waves may not look uh, realistic. Any individual parts of the motion may look okay, but, but overall, um, as a whole, it may not uh, look right, such as in this comparison of a photograph of a real ocean and um, a rather obviously uh, computer graphic um, uh, creation. Now, to understand uh, the difference in order to understand how to uh, create uh, physically believable uh, waves, you should think about the natural frequencies that uh, everything has in terms of how it vibrates. And those frequencies depend on the material, depends on the shape, the size, uh, so forth. So as an example, imagine taking a wooden a baseball bat and a metal baseball bat and I'm going to uh, take these and drop them to the floor now uh, so that you don't know which one I'm dropping close your eyes close your eyes and listen to the sounds and just from the sounds it's rather obvious uh, which one was which uh, the metal uh, sounds very different uh, from the wood so uh, that is the challenge in creating um, the correct uh, form of waves, say waves on, a, on an ocean. Now, uh, to continue with this example of um, uh, waves in terms of sound waves and the comparison of that with uh, other types of waves like surface waves, uh, let's look at some uh, wave spectra uh, from sounds created by uh, different instruments and such. So uh, you'll be uh, listening to some sounds and then watching the um, spectral analysis. So the spectral analysis takes the sound and breaks it down into how much amplitude is in all the different frequencies. So here I'm playing a musical uh, recorder and you see some peaks that correspond to uh, certain frequencies which uh, correspond to the note that I'm playing. So, so here's a little video of that. And you see with each different note, there's a different um, set of peaks that are appearing. Unfortunately, there's a bit of an audio lag in the uh, between the video and the audio. Uh, here's a guitar that um, you can see some of the peaks. With the guitar, it's a much more complicated uh, spectrum. So many, even even plucking a single string, uh, there are many frequency peaks that uh, that appear in this uh, spectrum. Uh, here's some rather simple types of instruments like a whistle and a um, kazoo buzzer. So you see very big sharp peak. Um, here's another uh, type of uh, whistle. And this last one coming up is uh, just kind of a buzzer. So. Now, um, we can compare those to uh, more organic sounds like uh, cat meow. So here is a um, some cat, cat meowing and uh, myself imitating that meow. You 
notice the cat meow is actually much higher uh, pitch, so it um, has higher frequency uh, peaks than, than my own impersonation of a meow. And here's a um, different uh, breed of cats. These are some uh, Siamese cats have a very different type of... Instead of individual um, peaks in that uh, Siamese cat meow, it was more of a flat uh, spectrum in the sound. Uh, somewhat closer to what you find with white noise. So here's um, some white noise generated just from uh, shaking some plastic bags. And you see the spectrum here is very flat uh, all the way across. Uh, and this is why it's called white. It, it has equal amount in all frequencies. Now, uh, getting back to, to musical instruments, uh, different instruments can play the same note, but they uh, clearly are going to sound different. And that has to do with the spectrum. So the spectrum when, say, uh, a flute is playing a certain note, let's say an A, which is close to this 436 uh, hertz, uh, that um, note played on a flute has uh, this particular set of uh, frequency peaks, and that is the spectrum uh, for a flute playing that note. Now, if you have different instruments playing the same note, uh, the instruments obviously sound different, and that's because their uh, resulting spectra are different. So here we see uh, three other instruments playing uh, the same note, um, and so the the they all have similar uh, peaks in in the sense of the locations of many of the peaks are the same, but the amplitude of each peak is different with each instrument. So this uh, unique signature that each musical instrument has is called the instrument's uh, timbre or the tone color of the instrument. Now the same thing uh, occurs with uh, all sorts of waves. So if we look at the ocean, it uh, has a very different spectrum of waves whether it is a calm sea or somewhat choppy or if we're in the middle of a typhoon. So it's not just that the waves are bigger, the spectrum is completely different. In other words, if you have a ukulele and play it amplified, that's not going to sound the same as a guitar. Uh, the timbre, the color tone, the spectrum uh, is different uh, so you have the same thing happening with a different spectrum uh, depending on the sea conditions. Uh, and here, in fact, we see uh, the spectrum of ocean waves under different conditions. So when uh, it's low winds, the spectrum is uh, fairly flat, somewhat like uh, white noise. And then uh, under uh, stronger and stronger winds, the uh, spectrum uh, becomes more peaked in the low frequencies. Remember the low frequencies are the long wavelengths and so we have um, a lot more uh, of this amplitude in the very long um, slow waves in uh, heavy seas. So uh, this is something which is uh, makes it difficult to recreate uh, water waves using uh, scale models. Uh, with scale models, uh, you can play all sorts of tricks to make the waves 
uh, look as if uh, it's uh, a large ocean wave, uh, and yet it's very difficult to get the correct characteristic spectrum. And so uh, all too often it simply looks like uh, everything is, is very small, as we see in this um, two examples from uh, two earlier films that used uh, scale models for ocean scenes. Uh, here you see um, a clip from uh, the 1981 uh, Clash of the Titans. And uh, when you see the monster who is being released at this point, uh, when the monster appears on the surface and when you see the waves uh, crashing into the city, uh, you'll see that they um, simply do not have the um, correct form of the scale. So here comes the uh, uh, dramatic uh, destruction. And uh, these are mostly, com much of this is composited onto um, scale models for parts of the city and uh, for the monster, the, the kraken. So here is the kraken, which is supposed to be a gargantuan uh, sea creature. And it is approaching the city. Now these are just um, filming of large waves. Now this is the scale model, but you see that these, um, well, that's just live action. So there's the scale models and it's rather hard to make these waves really look as if they have the proper uh, gigantic scale. Now here's uh, the more recent uh, version of Clash of the Titans and uh, at this point it's possible to uh, use computer graphics for these uh, visual effects and so the um, waves as you'll see when the the monster, the, the Kraken again, very different looking Kraken, uh, but nonetheless uh, rising from the sea and attacking the city. But uh, as I said, in this case, the um, waves are more successful in the sense that the uh, spectrum makes them appear as if they have the proper uh, gigantic scale. So in summary, uh, objects of different materials and shapes and sizes vibrate at their own set of natural frequencies. A spectral analyzer will measure the different frequencies that are uh, present in a spectrum. When you uh, apply this analysis uh, to musical instruments, you see that each instrument has its own spectral signature, which is called the uh, timber, uh, also known as uh, tone color. And uh, this uh, applies to uh, effects animation in that uh, ocean waves and other natural wave phenomena uh, also have their own unique spectral signatures. So uh, there is a uh, tone color in a sense for um, ocean waves under different conditions and at different scales. And um, finally, the spectral signature varies with the material properties and with uh, scale. So we saw that with scale models. And one of the things which is used with scale models to try to uh, compensate is to add various uh, additives uh, to the water, to change the viscosity, to change the surface tension. And all of that um, changes the spectral signature of the resulting surface waves.